Come, Jesse. Sally forth. My pants are last time, uh, so I don't even know what. <laughs> Just don't fall. I think it's okay. Chill out here for a while. Hi everyone, welcome back to Outdoor Adventure Craft. My family and I were able to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life this weekend and come up to the Dungarvan River here. It's in uh, New Brunswick here in Canada and we're staying at an old hunting lodge uh, back down the river a ways called the Hooper Hollow Lodge. It's closed now. Uh, the owner, uh, the original owner uh, was is 94 years old. This is actually his uh, last visit uh, up to the Hooper Hollow Lodge so it's kind of a special weekend and it's nice that we could come up here and share it with them. But uh, this afternoon, me and Jesse and Kupek, we've, we've come up the river a ways and we're just playing about, uh, practicing our skills and we thought we'd bring you guys along with us. We'll probably have a cup of tea here in a bit and I wanted to show you the backpack uh, that you saw me with on there uh, from One Tigers. They sent that to me and I've really enjoyed it uh, here this weekend and I, I wanted to show you some of the features that it has. So thanks for joining us guys here and welcome back to Outdoor Adventure Craft. So yeah, I thought for uh, a change, uh, I might try to make life difficult on myself and do a flint and steel fire today. I've only done it once before and I've never captured it on film. So I've prepared ahead here, I've got some brush bundles, I got my flint and steel kit, I got some dried grass for a bird's nest. So that's the first thing I want to do, I want to make sure I have this uh, ready ahead of time. Get this bird's nest softened up and loosen the natural fibers and dust and things will come out into it. And those little particles will catch, catch the ember well. And that'll help to light the grass. You want to keep it loose though, you don't want it compact. If you, if you bunch it up while you're working it, loosen it back up. You need about enough material to, uh, to fill your hand. So depending on how successful this is, I may need to edit this a little bit as I mess with the, uh, the char cloth and the flint and steel. But uh, I'll definitely make sure if I get this bird's nest going and uh, into the, the, the brush bundles that uh, We'll make sure the footage is there for you. So I'm just gonna set, now that I got this ready, I'm just gonna set it aside and uh, go to work with the char cloth. Don't need much char cloth. Uh, set it on the edge of the, uh, the flint and steel so that you can hit at a 45 degree angle and cast sparks back onto the, uh, onto the char cloth.
<laughs> there was flames once. Can you not just wave it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I thought I was going to pass out too. That's the first time I got flint and steel on film. I'm glad I was able to catch that for you guys. That was a lot of work. It's not so much the tools as it is the blowing on it. There we go. That brush bundle technique I learned from Wayne Russell, that works amazing. Once you get your uh, bird's nest going, get that brush bundle in there and uh, you're all set. I'm going to go get some water for tea and catch you in a minute. While I got the fire going, I'm going to take the opportunity to make some more char material next time I want to use flint and steel. Um, I found some really uh, resiny looking punk wood very very dark colored but it's uh it's definitely dry rot very light and crumbly but this would make excellent uh get that into a coal and you can uh, start a fire real nice so throw it in my tin here and it's a good thing about uh, flint and steel uh, long lasting very renewable find good char material anywhere Water's ready for tea. Split second, I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> So it's been a nice couple hours here on the Dungarvan River. Uh, we were able to uh, demonstrate a flint and steel fire and uh, have a cup of tea. And before we headed back to join up with the rest of the family, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, this One Tigers pack that I've got with me here today. Um, Han from One Tiger sent it to me there a couple weeks ago. Since then I've packed it up and uh, taken it out into the bush a couple times, brought it out uh, here this afternoon. It is rugged. Uh, it's a 24 liter uh, pack, uh, kind of a tactical style with uh, molly webbing all over it. It's got two main compartments to it. It's got a lower section, which right now uh, basically houses my shelter equipment. I'm not going to do a loadout on the pack today, but I, I want to talk about it. Uh, it would also be a good spot to keep a sleeping bag because you could compress in, uh, that sleeping bag down in that lower compartment. And then it has the upper main compartment where I'm keeping uh, like my fish and tackle boxes with all my gear divided, you know, fire starting gear and tools and uh, toiletries and kitchen items and things like that. As well as, you know, I have room in there for uh, an air gun, a pellet gun, uh, a collapsible uh, bow saw, and a plethora of other things, headlights and cordage and things like that. One of the things I like, uh, it has uh, four external pockets as well. Um, on the side here it has these, they kind of commonly be used for water bottles and things like that, but it has a compression strap that goes across the top of it there. You can see that you're able to uh, ratchet down on anything you might keep in there. I like them for keeping uh, my fuel. Um, in my cook set right now I have a MSR XGK, basically the tank of, of backcountry stoves. Naphtha stoves. So I keep my fuel tank outside of my pack so it doesn't contaminate uh, my clothing or food or anything like that. But I also keep my bear spray on the outside of the pack where it's accessible. And again, like I said, you're able to uh, ratchet these compression straps down over those, uh, which is really nice. In addition to those two, those two lower packs, it has these upper packs. 
One side I use for my flint and steel kit and other fire starting items. And on the other side I have, you know, just a few odds and ends, uh, wedges uh, for working with wood and uh, some tent pegs. So it's nice to be able to compartmentalize or divide up, you know, like fire making, shelter building, you know, tarps and cookware and then your main compartment. It's really nice that way. Uh, when you look around the bag, every stitch is it's heavy, heavy, double stitched. Um, lots of great areas for adding gear and, and strapping down additional items. These straps on top, you might put a sleeping bag across the top. I like the profile of the bag too uh, when it's on. You know, there's a lot of the, the girth of the pack is across the, the lower back and you're able to uh, use the, the, the waist strap to keep the weight riding on your hips as opposed to your shoulders. But I like how it tapers uh, towards the top and you can, you can use these compression straps here to, uh, to amplify that effect. It has a, a nice look when it's on because of that taper and a nice feel too because uh, you're able to change the, uh, the amount of pressure you have riding on your shoulders. If you want it to kind of pull uh, against the, the front here as opposed to way down on your, your shoulder muscles. It's nice if it pulls across your breast and crossbone. Uh, what do you call that? Collarbone. It's nice if the weight can pull across your pecs and collarbone as opposed to right across there, so that's nice. Um, ventilated uh, back too. It has uh, an internal uh, frame, so it actually has an internal metal frame, which I was uh, surprised to see in a pack this size, but the, uh, the back floats off the frame and the rest of the pack as well as the lumbar support. So it's actually really well ventilated and cool. I've, uh, I've used it on my motorbike as well. It's a nice pack for that. But out here in the, the humid weather of the Maritimes here in Canada, uh, this ventilated back is a, is a real lifesaver. In addition, you know, lots of uh, gear loops all over it uh, for hanging carabiners, flashlights, things like that. Uh, the, the straps can be undone this way if you want to uh, take it off that way. Like if you've got a real heavy load, sometimes it's hard to set down, you know, without letting one strap off first or the other. You can just undo those buckles. But, uh, and it looks great too. Uh, built like a tank, looks great. Uh, one Tigris 24 liter tactical pack. Uh, really want to thank them for sending this to me. And I just wanted to show it to you guys. Price is great too. I'll put a link uh, to the product uh, and to One Tigris and their website down in the description. So uh, go check them out. Well, thanks for being here with us this afternoon as we played about along the side of the river here. It was, uh, it was a nice afternoon. Jesse's throwing the last few embers of the, the fire in the water, so I guess that's taken care of. But uh, we'll see you next time on Outdoor Adventure Craft. Thanks for joining us. You all set, dog? Come on. That's like as big as a silver dollar. That is freaky. Oh. <laughs> oh. Get him. Oh. He owns your keys. <laughs> yes, sir. Look at this spider sitting along the side of the river here. I put my keys down and coaxed him up onto him for effect. Man, he's huge. Meant to tell you guys, don't forget to uh, subscribe, like, and comment here so we can have some dialogue. Check out my website too at www.outdooradventurecraft.com. Look at that bugger. Look at him. Ow! He jumped at me! Oh, that was freaky! Oh, what a bastard! Oh, he's huge! Oh, man! Oh, oh man, he turned on me. I did not expect that. Man, I'm getting out of here. I don't like him. He probably don't like you much either.